Hey guys, Delby here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about a pretty much a legend in the underground house and techno scene, Christoph. He's a world-class producer and DJ, playing on some of the biggest stages at the biggest clubs and festivals. He's been at the top of the game for well over a decade now and releasing on some of the biggest labels in the scene. I'm talking the likes of True Soul, Injuna Deep, Knee Deep in Sound, Defected, Prida, and most recently his own label, Consequence of Society. As I said, dude's a legend. I'm a big fan of his stuff. So if you're not familiar with Christoph or his journey, he kind of broke through making tech house, I guess. Not like current tech house, a bit more underground, a bit more influenced by deep house and that kind of thing, but with punchy techy beats. These days, his music is more classified as progressive house or melodic techno, but I think the thing that separates him is that he continues to use these kind of techy beats similar in a way to someone like Dosum does. Just quickly, if you like the track that's playing, it's a new one of mine coming out on Glasgow Underground next week. There's a link in the description if you want to go to Beatport or Spotify and pre-purchase or pre-save it. Your support is much appreciated. And as always, you can download the project files from this video. There's a link in the description to Patreon. It's one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure I keep bringing you these videos every week. And let's jump into Ableton and make some techy progressive house. All right, so here we are inside Ableton, and this is a project that I've put together in the style of Christoph. I guess it's like Progressive House, but it's kind of somewhere between Progressive House and Tech House, or Techno. So it's like, yeah, kind of melodic, but it's got like this driving Techno, Tech House kind of groove. We'll get into it. It's cool stuff. Um, so what I've done here is basically in, taken heavy inspiration from Christoph's track, the music. I want to talk first of all a little bit about how I've gone about referencing that. So what I did is in another project I went in, I took the track and I basically used these blank MIDI clips to go and map out all of the parts in the track. So just listening through and going okay what's in this section, what's in this section, where do different things come in. And it's not like extreme amounts of detail but it's kind of getting a good overview of what the different elements are, where they come in, and I'm using these different colors to show increases in energy or intensity through the arrangement. So this has given me a pretty good indication of what's happening when. These pink parts on the kick represent when the kick's filtered, the same with these light blue parts on the bass. So this is like a really cool thing that I can now use to like drag into another project and reference just to kind of when I, you know, if I'm feeling stuck, if I'm not sure what to do in my arrangement or something, I've got this as a reference. Also, it's quite good to be able to see what are the elements in someone's track and am I putting in too many or am I putting in too few? Oftentimes, I think it's that we put in too many. I know I'm guilty of that. It's been a big learning curve for me to try to m reduce the number of tracks that I put into a into a record and just really kind of focus in on the bare necessities and Christoph is someone that's really good at this he doesn't use like crazy amounts of of sounds but everything counts and everything is kind of pushing that record forward complex simplicity I would call it and that was something this has actually taken me quite a while to do because that was something that I experienced when I started making this at face value, it's pretty simple, but every sound that you put in needs to kind of do a job. And to get the right end result and the right vibe, it was really important to get all of those sounds punching properly, mixed correctly. A lot of them are quite aggressive. There's, it's like a really full, really compressed mix. Um, I'll just play you a tiny bit of the original. We obviously want to avoid copyright, but um, you only live once, eh? Let's give it a go. So that's what we're going for, that kind of vibe. I have to say, I haven't got it anywhere near as good as Christoph's track. You know, I did this in a couple of hours. I don't know how long that took him, but it's really, really good. That's not to say that it's really, really complicated. It's just really, really good. It's well done. All right, so let's just have a quick listen through to a sample of what I've got. So there you go, kind of inspired by, right? If you download the project file, I will include this mapping of the track in the project file. So there's a link in the description to go to Patreon and grab that if you want to. Obviously, I'm not going to give you Christoph's track, but it's a great track. Go to 
Beatport and buy it. So we'll start with the kick. It's basically one that I've sampled from Christoph. I'll link to a video up here where you can find out how to do that. Here's the kick, just a kick. It's a big boy. Punchy, not too long, but it's got like a really solid body. It's a big energetic. Something that's happening here on the kick and bass bus, I noticed while I was referencing the track that he kind of uses filters, high and low cuts on different elements and kind of different groups of elements at different places through the track. Uh, he might even be doing it on the master as well. But this is something that I'm doing on this low end bus with my kick and bass is using this fade away, which basically does like a really smooth low cut fade away. So if I just play the kick and bass and quickly demonstrate what that sounds like. So that's what we'll be doing in some of these places, as well as taking out the lows, the subs from the kick and the bass. So that's just like a really smooth way to ease through some of those transitions that I noticed he was using quite a bit. Okay, so we've got a clap. We've got a couple of claps, both from Underground Shades of House. Link up here to my sample pack. And we basically got two big analog style claps, both panned left and right, just to kind of spread it out, give a bit of stereo. And then I'm using some clipping from Standard Clip. If you're not familiar with clipping, it's kind of, it's basically like shaving the top off the tra of a transient. We can also do it with the Ableton Saturator. So in Standard Clip, these claps are just taking the transient off. If I turn that off, Sounds a little bit different, but almost the same. And that just means that we're not hitting the limiter every time that clap plays. So we can have the clap a bit louder. In the Christoph tracks that I was referencing, the clap is generally pretty loud and proud. Let's do it with the saturator. Pull this output down, turn on soft clip, and we're just gonna bring up the drive until it goes over this line and starts clipping. And then what I do is, so that's 126, so, sorry, 26. I'll bring this down by 26. So we're adding 26 dB and bringing away 26 dB. It doesn't have the graphic readout, so I can't see exactly what's happening to the transient, but it does, this, it does the same thing if you don't have a clipper. Standard clip's a good cheap clipper though, if you wanna get into that. Then I've got a bit of reverb on here. It's my standard reverb. It sounds like this. Just helps that clap to sound really big. Okay, let's turn off some of this stuff. Big clap. Now let's look at the hats. We've got quite a few hats going on. So we've got this open hat, which is just a nice, another one from my sample pack. It's panning left and right each hit. It's kind of based on a 909. It's a 909, I think. We've got this tambourine shot, which is just happening on the downbeat to give a bit of accent to that kick. We've got this groove shaker, which is playing right from the start. This is just playing a MIDI pattern like this. Sounds like this. And we've got a second shaker, which sounds like this. So adding some nice pace and some groove to the top end of the drums. Then we kind of build it up. We layer this 909 with a, another 909, but more open. And then I'm using the decay on this to open it up even more. So that kind of gives it this big feeling, like kind of increasing the energy, like, like we're rising up. And then that's panning at the same timing as this other hat. I'm not sure in, his, in the music he might be using one hat, but it sounds like it's being layered and it's increasing in energy after after the intro kind of thing. Then we've got a ride, a 707 from Ableton Live. 
So that's kind of this low, high, low, high, low, high pattern. And we've also got some side chain on that, just ducking it, helping it to kind of pump. You just round this off a little bit. This is mixed quite high in the mix, higher than I would normally do it, but you know, it's kind of somewhere between progressive house and techno. So you can imagine when that's playing really loud in a club, it just brings up so much energy. It creates like a lot of intensity. Uh, after this drop, we bring in a 16th hat, straight 16ths. I didn't use that vocoder, so let's delete it. And it's just pumping a little bit with the side chain again. So that sounds like this. And in terms of like the sounds for these drums, basically I'm just listening and trying to figure out sounds that complement each other with the intention of them being kind of like pretty aggressive as most of the sounds in his track are pretty aggressive. We've got a few percussion bits, just a couple. A conga playing a pattern like this. You can hear I've got a little bit of delay on that, and I've got an overdrive just kind of bringing up some harmonics, increasing the saturation of it, taking out the subs so we don't interfere with the kick and bass, side chain so it doesn't get too out of control, and I've got a little bit of randomization on the velocity so that each note sounds a little different. I'm using the LFO on the simpler here with a, just a little slight change in the pitch, and this is set to like a random or noise. That just means that the pitch of each hit of this conga is going to be ever so slightly different. It just kind of makes it feel a little bit closer to someone playing it. And the controls, I've also got a bit of pan randomization. So all this kind of randomization just helps to add up a little bit more natural sounding drums. Then I've got this tom, which kind of just plays with the conga just creates a kind of a bit more of an interesting percussion groove. Cool. Oh, one other thing on the kick. I noticed in his track he had some of these like double kicks at the end of a phrase, but they were pretty randomly placed throughout the track. It feels like it was perhaps not an afterthought in the arrangement, but maybe like the track was arranged and then he kind of went through and sprinkled in a few of those little things. That is the drums done and dusted. Let's have a look at this bass. Now, this bass actually took me a while to get right. I don't know, I don't think it's as good as his bass, but it's, it's sounding cool. It's just playing this kind of eighth note bass line with an emphasis on the offbeat. And then I've just added this extra octave note just to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm not sure if he had that or not. In terms of the sound, I'm using Vital and I've got three oscillators stacked up. This one is tuned down two octaves, one octave, and this is up seven semitones. So that's making it into kind of a chord, a short plucky envelope. And then we're going into a filter so without the filter. And then this envelope here, very plucky, is controlling the filter. But you notice that this is not actually doing too much because we've got some effects which includes another filter. So if I turn this off. So I've got a bit of chorus just to kind of spread it out and I'm using this filter so that the subs remain somewhat mono. And we've got some distortion which is adding quite a lot of harmonics and quite a lot of vibe to the sound. I did have this up, up in the mix but I noticed that his was pretty subby. Um, it sounds kind of cool but... There's also, there's also quite a lot going on in the synths, so I just wanted to peer this back a little bit. Then we've got this other filter, which is set to a 12 dB and this dirty algorithm with a bit of drive. This is giving it quite a bit more grit as well. And I haven't put the whole signal through the filter. I've just kind of used the mix to bring it back a bit because it was a bit too dirty. So 
So that's the bass. And then I've got this echo, which is eight notes set to ping pong, sorry, dotted eighth notes. I've got a filter on that, cutting out the subs. And then in the character section here, I'm using the ducking set to minus 23 dB. So basically you only hear that echo when the main bass isn't playing. And I'm just using this EQ to cut out some of the very low subs and control some of the highs. I like those kind of harmonics coming through there, but in the mix it didn't sound quite right. So I pulled it back a little bit, gave it a little bump there just to emphasize. Uh, we've got LFO tool sidechain using the auto filter to cut out some of the subs. Now on here, there's another bunch of sounds, bass lines that I tried with Drift. Let's have a look quickly. In the end, I just went with something that was a bit more reminiscent of the reference track. Why have I got that in the percussion group? Did I just do that now? So let's have a look at these melody elements quickly. So I went for a synth riff that was kind of similar to the one in, in the music. I basically, I copied it and then it didn't really work because of the timing of the vocal. It was different, so it was kind of clashing. So I just went for something in the same kind of vibe, but with a slightly different pattern. It's a patch from Drift, and I'm just doing some automation on the filter here. to create some more intensity in those sections. And I'm also automating another filter here just for some kind of like universal control over it. Let's just turn these off. Got some compression, quite a lot of compression. It's kind of controlling the dynamics a bit, but it's also adding a bit of punch to the start of the sound. Saturation, everything in this track is pretty pretty heavily saturated. Everything's quite gritty, and that just seemed to be the nature of the reference track. Now I've got these mid plucks using wavetable, two sawtooth oscillators, and a sub, which has got the tone all the way up, which I believe is close to a saw or a saturated uh, sign. So you can hear this is playing as a call and response with this main riff, or well, they're kind of working together to create one riff. Oh, I forgot to mention what oscillators this is. I've got a square and a saw. I did have a both saw but the square adds a, kind of separates it a little bit from this sound and it also helps to give it a bit more aggression. Uh, then I've got this brass kind of lead. Brass is kind of a loose term for it, but it's this, this kind of quite aggressive lead sound that comes up in the end of the break. Basically, that was something that was happening in the reference track. Then we've got this pad. All oh, right, so that brass is just a preset called Rogue from Drift. Not much happening on it. I'm just using the LFO tool to control it, duck it from the kick. So the pad, I noticed in Christoph's track, he used a pad right from the start that helped to really kind of control the energy and create tension and kind of build up energy throughout the track. You could kind of almost map the cutoff of the pad and the volume of the pad to the energy of the track. So this is just a preset from Ableton. I think it's Drift again. Yep. And I'm just using the filter to add some automation to basically do what I was just describing from the reference track. So that sounds like this. So 
So maybe I'll play it here without the pad and then bring it in and you can kind of see what I mean. That really creates like a very solid kind of undertone for the track and gives a lot of energy. It also helps it to feel a little bit closer to the progressive or melodic kind of direction than your standard techno or tech house. Got a string. This one's also from my sample pack. The original is an E, so I've just pitched it down to get to C, and then we're just playing it in G, which is the key of the track. It's a string. It's got a bit of automation here, just on the volume. I've got this sequence, which wasn't in the original, but I kind of wanted to also add something that might be in a different track of Christoph's. Uh, this kind of seems like something that he uses quite a bit, like these kind of like melodic sequences that are kind of somewhat mixed in the background, but just help to give that progressive vibe. This is a cool kind of almost 80s like sound. Again, just another sample from, uh, sorry, preset from Ableton. Got a bit of auto pan, a bit of erosion, and I've, I've used this chord device so that it's playing also an octave down. Then I'm filtering that away. So it adds the harmonics of the lower octave, but we're not actually playing it. Uh, but then I don't want that because we've got a lot of stuff going on in that space. So I'm taking it away. But you can hear it sounds very thin when I take that take that chord away. So yeah, these kind of like one bar sequence, not an arpeggio, but it's similar to an arpeggio, a sequence. Christoph uses them quite a lot. All right, so the vocal. Now this vocal is definitely not as good as the one Christoph has used. But we work with what we've got. So what I've done is basically I took, I went on Loop Cloud, found something that sounded all right, then chopped two pieces of it and uh, consolidated them together. I'll duplicate it and then unfreeze this one so we can kind of listen to what's going on with the processing. I'll just grab all this, group it, and turn it off. So without any processing, it sounds like this. I can't stop. I can't die. I actually got something that was two semitones higher, so in A, and it gave it more of the vibe I was looking for by finding something in A and pitching it down. I couldn't really find something in G that sounded right. Good tip there, like find something close to the key of your track and pitch it down to get it more of a kind of deeper underground vibe. A lot of processing here. Let's just work backwards and take it all off. So I'm adding some overdrive, add a bit more grit to the, to the vocal. I can't stop, I can't lie, I can't stop. Makes it kind of sound a bit more aggressive. EQing out some of the lows and some of the highs, it's quite sibilant, which means the S's and stuff are quite loud. I can't stop, I can't lie. The overdrive brings up those sibilant sounds, so that's kind of controlling that a bit. It's not like a pop track, so I'm not too worried about this being perfect. It's more to just kind of fit it with the melodic elements and get the vibe. I'm adding some chorus from Tell Chorus Alex to spread it out a wee bit. I can't stop. I can't lie. So let me just play that actually, and then I'll show you why I added this echo. So I didn't like this kind of pause between these two things. I wanted that space filled in. I could have like chopped up the vocal. This was just an easier way to do it. Uh, I've got this echo and I've got it set to eighth notes. I've spread them out a little bit so the echo is being widened. I've got it set to almost 50% dry wet. It could be 50%, it's 49. I'm filtering out a little bit from the echo and then I'm using the ducking again to duck it. So basically volume of the echo is pulled down when these are playing. The result sounds like this. So it does exactly what I was saying, like fills in that space, basically. So 
So it kind of makes the vocal sound a bit bigger, fills up the space, it kind of evens out the groove because the vocal becomes a bit more even. Um, using the glue compressor to control the dynamics. Now I'm using this auto filter basically in the same way that I was talking about with the pad to bring in the vocal, introduce it, and then kind of control the energy of it throughout the track. So what you just heard a little snippet of there is the next thing. That's this LFO tool, and I've got it set to a gate preset. So that's basically just ducking it every other eighth note on this pattern. There's a gate in Ableton Live, but you'd need to sidechain it uh, with a trigger. Easy enough to do. I'm sure you can find a tutorial on YouTube if you aren't familiar with how to do that. But I knew the sound I wanted, and I knew that I could get that using LFO tool. So I went ahead and did it. Um, I'll leave this frozen so that if you download the project, link in the description to Patreon, uh, then you can have the vocal as it is. Okay, so in this part here, these like lighter bits, basically I've automated the LFO so that it comes on. And then I've also automated the reverb on this echo. So it's kind of filling out a bit more space. Let's hear what it sounds like. And then I've just got a final EQ to take out any added lows from the filtering. Let's turn that off, use this one again. So it just adds like a different kind of texture, creates like different sections within the track, but it's using a familiar element. So it's doing something different, but the same, which is like a really cool trick to switch things up. So basically create different versions of the same element in your track and then use them at different times, create dynamics and differentiation within the arrangement. After the drop, we've got this scream vocal, which I've just kind of pitched to be in key with the track, I think, or maybe it's tuned down five semitones from the key because it sounded nicer. And then we've got a lot of delay because I've tuned it down. I'm just using this to kind of emphasize the highs again. Quite a bit of reverb, quite a bit of reverb. My send reverb is here. You can check out this video linked here, which goes and th goes through and explains my template in detail. So you can see all this stuff and how I've put it in and why. And you can also download that from Patreon. So we are getting to the end. There's some effects. I've just got this white noise riser, which I grabbed from my sample pack. Uh, sounds like this. Pretty standard stuff. Then we've got this white noise crash that I created using drift. So I've just got the noise oscillator on and then I'm using the envelopes of the amplitude and then I've got this envelope 2 set to the filter playing a one bar note and then I've just used this um, EQ to control the highs and lows a little bit just so we're only hearing the frequencies that I want and then I'm using the LFO tool to create that pumping effect which just gives it a bit more energy on the drop then we've got some snare rolls so it's just like a very straight 909 sixteenths we are using the sustain automation. We are cutting away the lows and using some volume automation. So the volume automation obviously brings it up in volume, getting towards the drop. The lows just helps it to be a bit less intense when it comes in and get more intense as the frequencies are becoming more full. And then the sustain is really cool. You can hear like it, it's not super sustained. It's uh, got a bit more attack. But then we'll hear it as it goes up here. It's going to become more full. So basically, it's if I use this one shot bit, it's almost like it's doing that. And then the automation's going like this. So the, the sound becomes more full. But it's a little bit more elegant than doing it that way. Uh, let me just find that. Here we go. So 
Sounds good. In context. So let's have a little talk about the arrangement quickly. So as I mentioned, I was using this fadeaway on the kick and bass bus. I'm also using this washout on the drums in the breaks. Some automation like this. If I accentuate this, you'll hear what it's doing. So that's what it does. So it's kind of filtering away the lows, adding a whole bunch of reverb and delay, creating intensity in, the, in whatever signal goes through it. In this case, it's on the whole drum bus. I could hear something like this going on in Christoph's track. He might even be using this. It's a very popular rack. Basscliff's done a great job. And now I'm using the same thing on the whole synth bus, just here. Cool. So that just helps to really kind of emphasize those buildups. And then when you take that away at the drop, it creates this like dynamic shift in the energy. So this is kind of like building up, building up, taking up more space, more highs, more washiness, and then it flips at that drop and the low end comes back and just fills in that space, gives the energy back and takes your attention. So lots of that kind of automated transitions in, in his tracks. So that's about that. Um, as I said, you can download the project files if you're into that. Link in the description to Patreon, best way that you can support the channel. There you can find this project file and the project file from pretty much every other video I do. That said, Let's have a listen through from the start to the full thing. Right guys, there you go. How did I do? Let me know in the comments. Also, what's your favorite Christoph track? This track, the music, is one of my favorite of his in the recent years. If you like this kind of videos where I recreate the style of different artists, then check out this playlist. There's a bunch of stuff in there I'm sure you're gonna like. That's it from me today. Catch you next time. Peace.